Hi everyone, it's me again, Dr. Krupka. I wanted to talk a little bit about thyroid physiology today. I find lately I've been having this discussion quite a bit with my patients. So I'm going to go through a couple of videos on thyroid physiology, thyroid dysfunction, um, how to understand your thyroid lab tests, uh, several of those issues, because we're seeing a lot of this coming up lately. Um, first of all, let me teach you a little bit about your thyroid. Now, it is possible to have thyroid symptoms, and you can find lists online of thyroid symptoms and, uh, you know, having too much or too little thyroid activity. I'm going to speak generally about thyroid problems, but understand these problems may happen in other organs and, and glands and other parts of the body that impact the thyroid without the thyroid itself having trouble. So just understand that as I'm talking about it. I'm, I'm going to generally speak about thyroid stuff. Um, first of all, let's run through kind of the anatomy and the, uh, and the supply chain for thyroid hormones. First of all, your brain is involved. You have to make a certain amount of dopamine and serotonin in order for the brain to be able to signal the pituitary to do its job. Now, the pituitary is a gland kind of in the middle of your forehead, and its job is to send messages to other organs and glands to ask them to produce things. Um, one of those is the thyroid, and it communicates with the thyroid by making a hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone. We call it TSH. Any of you that have ever had a lab test for your thyroid are probably familiar with TSH. That's actually produced by the pituitary, and it's used to ask the thyroid to produce thyroid hormone. Now, the thyroid produces hormone in the form of something called T4. It's tyrosine with four iodine molecules attached to it, and it's made by an enzyme called thyroid peroxidase enzyme. And that enzyme, or the TPO enzyme, is what's activated by TSH. So the pituitary releases thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH. That tells the thyroid to create T4. It uses thyroid peroxidase to do that, and that starts compiling and constructing all this T4. Well, then the T4 is released out into the system. The T4, though, is generally inactive. It doesn't do anything, or not enough to be of any consequence. That has to be converted into T3. It has to have one of the iodines pulled off of it, and the enzyme that does that out somewhere in your body, several different tissues uh, accommodate this, uh, is called a 5' prime diiodinase enzyme. You don't need to know all that, but there's an enzyme that does that. So once that's active onto T4, you get T3. That's active thyroid hormone. That has all of the effects on your organs and tissues that thyroid hormone has. So when you read through a list of what thyroid hormone does um, or how you're going to feel if you don't have enough of it or if you have too much of it, those are all from the effects of T3, not T4. Now, interesting twist, there's a feedback mechanism, as there is in, in many things in our body, if we make too much T4, that signals back to the pituitary to say, hey, stop making TSH, quit asking for any more T4, and the thyroid slows down production. When your T4 levels get low, it signals the pituitary to make more TSH, and that asks the thyroid to produce more T4. And that's the way the loop, or the feedback loop as we call it, is supposed to work. Interestingly enough, because TSH levels are dependent on your T4 levels, not your T3 levels. It is certainly op uh, it's certainly possible that you can have all of the symptoms of low thyroid, so to speak, because you don't convert T4 into T3, but your T4 levels and your TSH levels are perfectly normal. You don't technically have hypothyroid. The thyroid's doing its job but you have all the symptoms of it because you're not converting to the active form of the hormone, which is T3. Um, so that's the, the general layout of thyroid hormone production. Now, where can this go wrong? There are lots of places. In fact, there are, there are over 20 different patterns um, of thyroid hormone dysregulation. Some involve the thyroid having trouble, some involve the pituitary, some involve conversion issues out in the body, some involve issues with binding globulins um, and certain hormones like estrogen and testosterone that leave T4 unavailable to be converted. Um, so we're going to get into that in a second video, but I wanted to make it clear to you 
uh, if there's one takeaway from this, other than just understanding how it's produced, you need to understand that simply watching a TSH level um, or a T4 level or just looking at free T4, that does not tell the whole story of what's going on with your thyroid symptoms. Okay, this is a complicated supply chain. There are many different layers to this. And because of that, there are many different places this can go awry. So if you feel like you have thyroid symptoms, if you, if you read the checklist and, and you're just checking them off one after the other, but your lab test keeps coming back saying, oh no, thyroid's fine. Get in to see a functional medicine practitioner or give my office a call, but get in to see somebody that understands the mechanisms behind thyroid production, um, thyroid conversion, and where all of these kind of missteps or, or dysfunctional steps can occur so that you can get the care you need to kind of normalize your system so you feel the effects of the thyroid hormone that you're making or you make the appropriate amount or you get on the right medication. Um, sometimes the, in, the information we get from your testing allows us to give you some input on which type of thyroid medication is most likely to give you the biggest benefit. So anyway, all of that being said, if you have thyroid issues and you feel like you're not being listened to um, or that your, your situation is being misunderstood or ignored, find somebody that knows what they're doing, get in to see them, get a good evaluation, and let's find out what's going on and why you have those symptoms. Okay? So I hope that clears up a few things for you. Post some questions or comments if you have them. And like I said, we'll be going over another video shortly that does um, thyroid dysfunction where we'll actually start to break out all the different places where, where you can have dysregulation with your thyroid hormones and we'll probably even talk a little bit about lab tests and and what each one of those things means and what it takes to make a full thyroid panel as opposed to just doing TSH or TSH and T4 okay so that's it for now hope you liked it thanks for watching uh, and we'll continue this in the next video have a good day